Welcome, friends, today to There's Hope. I am so excited for you to hear um, a testimony that is so powerful. And uh, I'm grateful to have you here today, Crystal. This is Crystal Carson Scott, and uh, she has an amazing story. Uh, you have been on quite a journey, and I'm excited for everybody to, to hear what God's done in your life because it's powerful, really powerful. So thank you for coming today. Thank you for so, having me. Yes. I want to start out actually by um, where you started your childhood. I, I just recently read your testimony, and it's powerful. Um, but your childhood was not easy. And so if you could give us uh, some information or tell us what your childhood was like. Um, sure. So I was raised in a, a Christian home or what I thought was a Christian home because my mom had the Bible on the coffee table and um, every night before bed we would say our prayers and she would sing me Jesus loves me and so mm -hmm. I thought that's what it meant um, to be a Christian mm -hmm. um, but both my parents were also alcoholics and so a lot of the times um, she would be tucking me in at night I would smell whiskey as she yeah. was you know saying wow. my prayers with me and then uh, you know her and my father would fight a lot and um, there's a lot of arguing a lot of moving around we never had a whole lot of money wow. um, and my father when he drank would sometimes um, become abusive verbally or physically mm. and, um, and then unfortunately um, my mother had passed away um, she got cancer when she was just 42 and she died when I was just 15 so my dad um, at that time really went off the deep end, you know, without mm -hmm. her there. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, he never really claimed to be a Christian himself. Mm -hmm. um, that had to be prayers. really confusing for you, the, the Christianity part and then, you know, or somewhat like your mother, uh, what she was going through, just the, that must have been very confusing. It was, you know, mm -hmm. we, we never went to church. Um, right. I did attend some services when I went to visit my grandmother and that was mm -hmm. really nice, but yeah, I really thought that's what it meant. Um, and, you know, as I got older, I realized my mother lived a very defeated mm -hmm. Christian lifestyle right. where right. I knew somewhere down deep she believed, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, she didn't surrender any any of her vices or any right. of her sins, right. you know, so. Right, wow. So um, your father was abusive, and so um, at 15, you had to watch your mother die. If I remember correctly, you even took care of her as she was dying. Where, did you finish school? Were you able to go to school as you took care of her, or what happened? Um, so I tried to go to school, but the sicker she got, the more I wanted to be home to take care of her. Mm -hmm. And so I did drop out of school my sophomore year to stay home to take care of her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, after she had passed away, um, it got really bad there with my dad and we ended up um, using drugs together as a family. Um, that sounds unusual. It, it was. <laughs> um, it's really nothing my, my childhood would have would have shown me that that was where it was going to lead me to in my teenage years. You right. know? There definitely wasn't drugs um, you know out visible during mm -hmm. my childhood mm -hmm. but after mom had died dad just kind of stopped caring and sure. so mm -hmm. um, we used um, drugs together and alcohol together and wow as a way to cope as a family mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things just got really out of hand. So mm -hmm. um, I ended up running away and um, went to stay with some family members and then um, had a really hard time there and didn't really feel very wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up going to stay with a, a good friend of mine up in uh, Humboldt County, California. Okay. And um, when I got there, I wanted something different. I tried to do better and I was able to graduate high school through the California proficiency exam wow. at 16, and then mm -hmm. um, I was able to emancipate myself. Wow, at what age? At 16. At 16, mm -hmm. wow. But, and you did amazingly well for what you, know, what you were going through, really. Um, so, so you started using at what time, what age? I was 15. Um, well, I was about 13 when I started drinking with friends, but okay. I started using hard drugs at 15. Mm -hmm. um, and even when I, you know, tried to get it all together when I was 16, I was still using yeah. and still drinking. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was, um, became a very normal thing for mm -hmm. me. That's how you coped. Yeah. Th that's what you'd been taught, really, Yeah. how to cope. Wow. So you were born and raised in California, basically. How did you end up in Yakima? Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> so, um, so I ended up, um, actually somebody 
owed me some money eventually up in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Um, and I ended up going up there to collect and um, all I brought with me was my suitcase and my 540 iguana. Um, oh, nice. And I ended up getting left in Oregon and mm -hmm. um, moved to Portland permanently mm -hmm. and then um, ended up getting pregnant with my okay. oldest daughter mm -hmm. and her father um, offered to get a job and you know make a life for us mm -hmm. here in Yakima mm -hmm. and so I moved up here um, like eight months pregnant seven oh, months wow. pregnant with wow. um, my oldest mm -hmm. to start fresh um, and give her a better life. So uh, you made it to Yakima and uh, how did that work out? Um, well, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the I guess that life he, that, that life he promised must not have been quite what he well, promised. We were also, um, you know, we met using drugs together mm -hmm. um, and drinking and partying. And mm -hmm. um, so I wanted a different lifestyle when I got here to Yakima, being mm -hmm. pregnant and clean and sober right. during my pregnancy right. and wanting to do right by my daughter. And mm -hmm. Um, he wanted to too, but you know he wasn't really ready to give up mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the the partying. And so when she was about four months old, um, he had relapsed on hard drugs, and I had to ask him to leave and uh, became a single mama trying to raise her by wow. myself. So how old is she? Um, she she is uh, sixteen. Okay. Yeah. What happened after that? Um, so she was born in. 2006 and mm -hmm. um, I soon afterwards uh, met somebody I was bartending at hoops okay um, and I met someone there and mm -hmm. you know fell in love mm -hmm. um, and we ended up moving in together rather quickly and mm -hmm. um, started a very rocky relationship mm -hmm. um, you know we drank together a lot and we dabbled sometimes um, but it was years before the hard drugs really came into mm -hmm. the picture in that relationship mm -hmm. um, it was after we had had another child together, mm -hmm. and so my oldest, or my middle, um, Addison was born, and they're just three years apart. Okay. Um, and so after she was born, um, I'd unfortunately caught him cheating, and mm -hmm. um, he had relapsed, and so I kicked him out, and um, then he'd come back over mm -hmm. while I had been drinking, and um, we ended up using hard drugs together, and mm -hmm. so I relapsed um, on the hard drugs. And, mm -hmm. and he did too. No, oh, yeah, he, mm -hmm. he had been, and mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I just allowed myself to go right back at it. Wow. It wow. seemed like, you know, as soon as did I Did it feel out, hopeless? I mean, at times, did you just feel absolutely hopeless? I felt like mm -hmm. I could get away from the drugs and alcohol for a little while, maybe, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. at least the drugs for a little while, never mm -hmm. really the alcohol. I never mm -hmm. really got away from that, except for during my pregnancies. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it absolutely felt helpless. I just... Like, I couldn't say no very long. Like, mm -hmm. it totally, um, mm -hmm. I was powerless. Well, and that's what happens without Christ. We are powerless. We, as much as we want to do something different, we can't without the strength and, and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We just can't do it. And, and I thought I had Christ, you know, yeah. this whole time. I oh, thought, yeah. I thought mm -hmm. I was a Christian. Yeah. You know, because I said my prayers with my mama and, yeah. you know, did all that. And so. Mm -hmm. it, well, and it was it was the amount of Christ that, that your family had, you know, so that looked normal and that seemed, but it wasn't victorious living, like you said about your mother. You know that she was a believer, but just couldn't, uh, just couldn't get past all of that or, or give it to the Lord. So, um, so you ended up in Yakima County Jail somewhere in there. What yes. happened? Um, so that's a good place in my story. Yeah. <laughs> that's just about right, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up getting my first DUI um, when my second daughter was about a year old okay. and ended up in the Yakima County Jail. First time I'd ever been in jail. Mm -hmm. um, I'll never forget waking up to the smell of the blankets. Oh, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, not good at all. Just so hungover. I couldn't remember how I even got there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so bad, I think, when they brought me in. Um, they had had to take me to the hospital to pump my stomach. Wow. wow. And then when they brought me back to the jail, they put me directly into the God pod. Mm -hmm. which um, which is unusual actually it is mm -hmm. and I don't think they were full in the other units I think they put me in there because they <laughs> felt so bad for me they're like this one is gonna need help <laughs> exactly um, well and the Lord wanted you there yeah I mean that's really what it because typically what happens is um, in the God pod someone has to request to come into the God pod and I didn't actually tell you 
uh, what the God Pod is, but it is a program within the jail, Yakima County Jail, that has, um, that is actually the chaplains and teachers go into a tank, which is very different from, from most jails, uh, and we teach Jesus. And, uh, and people have to request to come into there. And when you're saying that you, you know, they just put you in there automatically, that's really not what they're supposed to do because in some sense they're doing that against your will or could be against your will. Right. A program, they can put you in any other unit, but they can't just put you in a program. And may maybe they heard me crying out for God and <laughs> my, my drunken stupor. <laughs> but the Lord wanted you there. That's yes. the cool part of it is he wanted you there. But but it is a program within the jail, and uh, it's a very unique program, and, and God has done some amazing things in there. So uh, Crystal is one of our gals that has been in the God Pod before. Yes, so, multiple times. Yeah, <laughs> multiple times, exactly. It took a little more than once, didn't it? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, what happened after that? Uh, so I was just in jail for that night and mm -hmm. part of the next day. Mm -hmm. um, I woke up and the women all prayed over me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I ended up leaving and I think I stayed clean for 30 days after that, which yeah. was a long time, actually. A long time for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then well, I was just right back at it, you yeah. know, and yeah. um, things just went from bad to worse in my relationship. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had ended up relapsing again, you know, which I did about every year or so mm -hmm. on the hard drugs mm -hmm. and um, I actually moved into a duplex across from um, you know 16th and Chestnut over mm -hmm. there by the Central Lutheran Church mm -hmm. and um, things got really bad there I actually lost um, custody of my daughters to their mm -hmm. dad who wow. had gotten clean and sober and was trying to do right mm -hmm. and um, I got together with a gentleman who lived a life of drugs and crime and wow. he introduced me to criminal activity mm -hmm. and um, so not only was I drinking and using drugs but now I was also committing crimes wow. on a regular basis. Wow, wow. You told a story about um, uh, about needing a website. Uh, <laughs> what did you do? I'm, that's a curious, that's an interesting story. So of course, you know, living the lifestyle I was living, yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't pay my bills very often. Right. And so my internet had gotten shut off and you know, we were having a really hard time committing tax fraud well, yeah. with no internet. You need that. So I called the church across the street mm -hmm. and I asked them for their Wi-Fi password and they were so nice, Phyllis. They just gave it to me over the phone. And um, you it seemed was, like a, the girl next door. I mean, I, just, I was yeah. just yeah. not the nice one. <laughs> yeah, it was exactly. um, saved by grace through faith, all capital letters, the password, the password. Mm -hmm. And I used to give it out to all my friends when they mm -hmm. came over and I would laugh that ha ha ha, it's the churches and we get free Wi-Fi. And yeah. um, I just thought it was so funny. Mm -hmm. um, so not so funny. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it helped me to commit multiple more crimes wow. that I ended up going back to jail on. Mm -hmm. In Yakima County? In Yakima County. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I ended up um, shortly after uh, beginning my career as a criminal um, back in the Yakima County Jail on my mm -hmm. first set of felonies. Okay. Um, yeah, that was the first big eye opener of like, oh my gosh, there's mm -hmm. something serious. Now wrong. I remember, I don't know if that, because you said you did go more than once. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one particular time, because there's been so many women through the years, they're just little pieces of things that I remember. My m memory of you was you getting into trouble in the pod, mm -hmm. and uh, they put you in the black chair, oh, yeah. and it's, you know, it, it, it puts your hands down, it ties your hands down, it ties your feet down, it ties your legs down, you're just tied down. And uh, I remember you just crying and me going in to talk to you, and you said, I can't even blow my nose. <laughs> I can't wipe my nose, and so I went and got something and come back and helped you blow your nose. Yeah. And uh, uh, but I mean, you just felt helpless. Now, and you said you were suicidal. Was that when you said you were su suicidal? Or was that a different time? No, that was um, that was the time where I had said it. I wasn't really suicidal. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the God Pod and um, trying to do right, mm -hmm. and uh, got into an argument with one of the gals in the God Pod, and you know. Um, didn't want to get in trouble with her, but I didn't want to leave the God Pod because I mm -hmm. knew how bad it was out there. But mm -hmm. I was just, you know, stuck in a hard place. Mm -hmm. The guards got called in there, mm -hmm. and gosh, I just wanted to go home. Yeah. And, um, you know, I said something really stupid. I was like, God, I just want to kill myself. 
Oh. And, you know. You don't say just, that in jail. Because I hated that place just yeah. so much in that moment. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you don't say that in jail. Mm -mm. So they mm -hmm. took that very seriously, mm -hmm. immediately um, strapped me to a chair and put me on a 72-hour um, mm -hmm. suicide watch mm -hmm. after the rubber room. Oh. Um, and, yeah, that's you did come to see me. And, yeah, it yeah. was... Um, Definitely it's, a, a it's an eye opener. horrible moment. Yeah, it is. And yet all of these things, you know, I oftentimes look at the things that we go through and realize that those difficult things that we go through have ultimately been sifted through God's hands. And, and it brings us to the place where we finally surrender because you needed to surrender at some point, yeah. truly surrender. I didn't know how to get along with people. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't know how to control my emotions. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to control my temper. Right. Um, you know, and that was just like what it was mm -hmm. leading up to that. But I think I needed that in order mm -hmm. to realize like I was the problem. Yeah. You know, and my mouth was the problem. Yeah. And, um, I had to get to that horrible, horrible place. Place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now what happened after that? Because you really ended up with some felonies. <sighs> um, yes. So. Um, I ended up getting out of jail. I got saved, actually, um, during that first longer stint mm -hmm. um, in the Yakima County Jail. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't really know what that mm -hmm. um, meant at the time, but, um, you know, I had been going to church services. I was really curious about mm -hmm. Jesus and getting to know him. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in one of the church services, and the pastor had shared the, uh, you know, saved by grace through faith scripture. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I knew that God was speaking to me. It was the first time I'd really heard him or felt him. And, um, you know, I did accept him as my savior and um, I started going to services and I started reading the Bible mm -hmm. and trying in my own strength, right. um, you know, to have a relationship with him and do mm -hmm. right. And so I got out again. I went to ABHS, did treatment and mm -hmm. got Which back is a good out. Program. Mm -hmm. It was a great program. Mm -hmm. um, if I had, you know, taken all their advice yeah. and done everything <laughs> they told me to do, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, but I got out and I made it about, about a month mm -hmm. without relapsing and mm -hmm. then of course you know kept my relapse all to myself and just did everything everyone told me not to do with relationships mm -hmm. and men and right um yeah it didn't it didn't work I was trying to attend church and I was trying mm -hmm. and trying and trying and it just it just didn't work because I was mm -hmm. still um living a life of practice sin mm -hmm. um especially within relationships mm -hmm. um and so uh I ended up um trying to go back to school. I got my associates in information technology, started a business and wow. thought that I was going to be okay because mm -hmm. I had some good things going on in sure. my life. And then um, the business failed and mm -hmm. I relapsed. And this time was just really, really bad. Um, mm -hmm. I had just given up. I'm like, okay, I've tried this Christian thing. I've tried going back to school. Mm -hmm. I've tried, you know, everything, everything I can think of. I'm like, forget it. I'm just going to be a criminal. I'm just going to be a tweaker, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's the only thing that was consistent, I guess. I just yeah. kept going back mm -hmm. there, and it's I'm what like, you well, knew. it's mm -hmm. what I knew, yep. and nothing else seemed to work. Mm -hmm. And so um, it got really, really bad, and I ended up committing um, a lot of crimes here in Yakima. Mm -hmm. I was running a identity theft racket out of my home, mm -hmm. and um, the cops ended up raiding my house, and um, I went on the run. I left my children with um, with my youngest's father, mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I just went and I was so scared of all the prison time I was sure. facing and I didn't want to go back, um, mm -hmm. to jail and I didn't want to serve prison time. And mm -hmm. I just kept going and kept going. And I went through Oregon state and California state, just committing crimes all up and down the West coast. Wow. Um, and I was just running scared, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I really, um, thought at that point, you know, gosh, I had been saved, but you know, God's mm -hmm. not going to want anything to do with me mm -hmm. now. Which is what the enemy was telling you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that I was unredeemable yeah. and unforgivable mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. horrible. And, you know, I mm -hmm. lost my kids again, which sure. just it, broke my heart. For a mother, but, that's just, it's unbearable. Mm -hmm. But I convinced myself, you know, that they were better off without me because mm -hmm. I just couldn't, couldn't get it together for yeah. them. Yeah, I know. I know it still hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it hurts because I think of, you know, they didn't understand. No, no. They didn't. And it wasn't fair. Mm -mm. But God redeems. Yes, he does. <laughs> so cool. He does. And, you know, and I needed that. I needed to get in some serious trouble mm -hmm. so that I could um, finally realize that I needed to surrender, you know, all of myself and all mm -hmm. of those areas. And, uh, you know, when I finally came to the end of that crime spree, 
um, and was facing some some serious prison time. Um, I was arrested once again in California, mm -hmm. and um, I was pregnant at the time of my arrest. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was with your third child. My third child. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, a little boy. Yes, my mm -hmm. my blessed surprise. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just was so broken and mm -hmm. facing so much prison time. And yeah. I what no kind idea. of time? I mean, I thought I was going to get 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, with all the combined. I had warrants in, I think, four different counties in California. Wow, wow. Um, I had felonies out of Oregon, mm -hmm. and then I still had um, pending probation violations mm -hmm. here in Washington. And so I had no idea. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really scary, and, you know, I didn't want to... I didn't want to lose another child or be right. separated from another child, but right. I knew that that was inevitable. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I was um, right before I was sentenced there in California. I found, um, you know, someone I thought I could trust to temporarily care for him, mm -hmm. um, you know, while I was inside and um, someone who could also offer him a relationship with his sisters mm -hmm. um, here in Washington. And so, um, you know, we signed a agreement and, um, you know, she promised to, you know, never try to adopt him or take mm -hmm. my rights away um, and, you know, to work with me to transition him when I got out and, um, you know, keep me contacted with him. And so I, I agreed and um, I was sentenced to four years in prison mm -hmm. um, with pending warrants. Mm -hmm. And I was shipped off to prison where um, I gave birth to my son. Wow. That couldn't be easy. No. Mm -hmm. um, it was the most heartbreaking thing I think I've ever physically and emotionally had to go through was mm -hmm. giving birth to him and um, giving him up having immediately to leave him mm -hmm. at the hospital mm -hmm. um, you know I got to spend three days with him okay. I, I had a c-section okay and I was thankful it for been, the yeah. surgery but <laughs> it would have been shorter <laughs> it would have mm -hmm. been 24 hours yeah um, so I got 72 hours that I cherished mm -hmm. and um but something happened to me during that time, something in that, that brokenness of mm. having to give up my only son. Yes, oh um, wow. You know, I could relate with, you know, how somewhat with how God must have felt. Um, to give his son. He gave up mm -hmm. his son, you know, mm -hmm. for us. And mm -hmm. I think I really started to understand what it meant when Jesus died for us. Mm -hmm. You know, the sacrifice mm -hmm. that, that he gave himself. Yeah, wow. And um, God does that. I mean, He will take the things that we go through and 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 show us what He's done, yeah. you know, and teach us in that. So that I'd love to bring in this uh, scripture. It's one of your life scriptures. I asked what it was, and it's in Ephesians two eight. Do you happen to know it by heart? Um, yes. Okay. So that was where um, the Wi-Fi password had come from, and the <laughs> scripture yes. that was given by the pastor right before. Um, I accepted my salvation, and mm -hmm. it is um, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. This is a gift of God. Yes, yes, and you know it's hard. It's hard for me to comprehend that kind of grace. Yeah. Uh, but nobody is good enough. Nobody can be good enough. We all need a savior, yeah. uh, and so it's a fabulous scripture. It's just um, his grace is amazing. I guess that's why. By we call it amazing grace, yeah. right? Yeah. And, it, and it's nothing that I did, you know, or no. could have done it. And I love that last part. Mm -hmm. It took me a long time to, to realize what that meant, you know, but mm -hmm. this is not of ourselves. This yes. is the gift of it's God. It's a gift of God. Because it's nothing that I did no. to deserve it. Mm -mm. Um, None of us can. Yeah. yeah. It really is a gift. And that's why the next part of that scripture says, not by works, uh, so that no one can boast, yeah. you know. And, and oftentimes we will even try to, to work for our salvation, and it's not possible. It's just not possible. So you ended up, um, what happened after that? We've got a little bit more time here. I'd love to know sure. some of the rest of the story. Uh, so I went back to prison, and um, you know, the most horrible place on earth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you Were know, you in Dublin in California? I can't remember. Uh, no, so that's a federal, so I was yes, state. You were state, okay. I was at um, Chowchilla for oh, a while, okay. mm -hmm. and then I was at um, the California Institution for Women. Okay. Um, and then I did a little bit of time at uh, Rainbow Fire Camp as well, okay. firefighter mm -hmm. fire program. But mm -hmm. I also did a lot of traveling to squash my warrants and right. went to many different county jails. And mm -hmm. um, I ended up meeting somebody who introduced me to the Harvest Bible University. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, someone once told me that reading the Word and getting to know God through the Word 
um, will give me all the answers I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted some answers. Sure. <laughs> and so I thought the best way to do that would be to go through a program mm -hmm. that helped me to study the Bible right. Um, the right way. Mm -hmm. And so I enrolled in the Harvest Bible University mm -hmm. and I spent the next two years of my prison time mm -hmm. um, studying the Word and testing and transcribing the Word every day. Um, and I earned my associate's degree in ministry. Good for um, you. While I was there. Good for you. Awesome. Which has helped you uh, now in some of the ministry that you have now because you're in uh, CR, right? Yeah, I'm a ministry leader at Celebrate Recovery. That's awesome. It's an awesome ministry. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can really help people because when people try to tell you, well, you have no idea, but you do have an idea. I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think reading the Word for myself and really working on that relationship, mm -hmm. getting alone with God and um, finding out that I needed to surrender those areas, that, mm -hmm. you know, that He was a holy God and that mm -hmm. um, you know, I had to get rid of the sin in my life mm -hmm. and the sin in my heart and mm -hmm. in my mind and practice. And He's the only one that could help you do that. Yeah. You tried to do it on your own Yep. and you'd make it about a month, right? Yep. <laughs> and so I finally made the decision to turn my will and my life mm -hmm. over to the care of God as mm -hmm. I understood Him. And I also worked a 12-step program mm -hmm. um, while I was inside and mm -hmm. working the steps and making amendses and looking at my character defects and mm -hmm. working on resentments and yeah. <sighs> just, wow. I did so much work yeah. while I was in there. It's yeah. a lot of work. It is a lot of work, and but you had some time. Yeah, he gave me he gave me uh, four good years <laughs> and of, to do it. Undivided in. attention. Um, yeah, wow. Same. And it gave you probably a lot of opportunities to work that out too, yeah. right? Because they're because of different people's personality. So um, I want to kind of fast forward because there's a lot more there. But uh, you met someone. Yes. Um, so while I was in prison. I didn't know why at the time, but mm -hmm. um, the Holy Spirit impressed upon me to start praying for my future husband mm -hmm. because I had had such an issue in relationships. Mm -hmm. I thought that, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to start praying for my future husband. Right. And so I've got all these prayer journals and you can go back and you can see all these mm -hmm. prayers for my husband. Yeah. I had no idea who that was going to be, yeah. but God did. Mm -hmm. um, right after I got out, I started attending the Celebrate Recovery Program mm -hmm. here in Yakima and um, they were opening a new one out in Terrace Heights, and so mm -hmm. I jumped on the opportunity to be a leader there. And um, November 5th, 2019, they opened the Celebrate Recovery Program mm -hmm. in Terrace Heights, and that was the same night I met my husband. Wow. Wow. Um, I had actually uh, kind of met him on Facebook, but mm -hmm. I invited him to Celebrate Recovery, mm -hmm. and he showed up an hour early and stayed late, and I knew that it was God him. Had sent him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I want to read uh, another one of your scriptures. You love uh, Zechariah, and do you know it? Yes. Tell me. Um, Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope, for I declare this day I shall restore double to you. Yeah, and he has done that, hasn't he? Has. he? Yes. I mean, you, you have a wonderful marriage now. You just bought a beautiful home. Yes. You have a great job. Uh, you have relationship with your children, yes. and God has done so much. And friends, I want to tell you today that it's possible for you as well. God is an amazing God who can do anything, can do what looks like it's impossible. And if you have come across this program today and you're saying, there's no hope for me, what would you say? There's hope. There's hope. There is hope in the Lord. There is hope in the Lord. Not in ourselves because we're not able, uh, you know, as much as you wanted to, you were not able to make those changes. And yet when you truly surrendered and gave uh, the Lord control of your life and really ask him into your heart, he made the changes. The Holy Spirit came in and, and did that work. So yes. I am so thankful for your, uh, for your willingness to come and being transparent today. And I know this is going to encourage many people. So thank you for being with us today, friends. This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for more than 40 years.